Hello, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I am here to review slash set up my Erin Condren wedding planners. I talked about the coiled wedding planner a little bit in a couple different weekly vlogs. The team over at Erin Condren actually sent me one right after I got engaged, which was very sweet, and very thoughtful. However, they only sent a 12 month one and I am going to need a 24 month one. They have two options where you can add in an extra 12 months for an additional $5. So I went ahead and ordered my own so I could add that extra 12 months in and I'm really excited to flip through it and get it set up. So some of the things I'm going to do today is just give you my thoughts on the different aspects of the wedding planner. Now I've only been planning a wedding for a couple of weeks now, so I don't know for sure which pieces are going to be really valuable and which pieces aren't going to be as valuable, but I'm going to give you my initial thoughts. I'm going to set up a couple of things and share how I'm planning to use some of the pages. So let's get right into it. So it does come with a vellum sheet sheet at the beginning, just like the normal life planner. And then on the front, you write your name or names, I guess, right? Both of your names and then your wedding date. I haven't filled this page out. We don't have a wedding date quite yet. I have learned very quickly that we're doing it a little bit backwards, I guess. A lot of people have asked, what's the date? Do you have a date? And I, I don't have a date because I have a season that I'm very interested in, but I'm not 100% sure on the date. It's going to be based on our venues availability. So we're planning to go look at venues in a couple of months when we're down in Texas and based on the venue that we like the best, whatever their first available date is, that's the one that we're going to go with. So for now, I'm not, I don't have a wedding date, but I've found that a lot of people apparently do it the other way around is they pick a date that they want and then they base everything else on that. So every venue and every vendor's availability. So I will go back and fill that in as soon as we get there. Classic Erin Condren has a bunch of different, you know, inspirational quotes. So before each of the monthly layouts, there is a notes page and I am planning to use this notes page just as a brain dump, just of things that pop into my head as I'm going through wedding planning or as I'm, you know, whether it's watching a wedding YouTube video or listening to a wedding podcast or reading a magazine or a book, just each month I'm gonna jot down everything that pops into my brain and then I can take the time later to transfer it to wherever it belongs, either somewhere else in the wedding planner. I also have a wedding spreadsheet. If there's any interest in me sharing that with you, let me know in the comments and I can I can share that as I sort of develop it a little bit further. But for now, I just wanna have a space to jot down everything that you know pops into my head. So then we have the monthly layouts. This is where the ruler ended up. So they are undated and you can pick the month that it starts. So I went ahead and chose October, even though technically by the time this video is going up, it's actually November, but I did some things in October and we got engaged in October. So I want to be able to mark that in the wedding planner because that is, you know, that's really the kickoff of wedding planning. So I'm going to set this up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and add in the dates for October. So I got the colorful date dots from Erin Condren. It does come with one set free, but then I, I bought a second set because it's 24 months. It only came with one set, which I thought was interesting. Like, I don't understand why it can't just come with both, but let's go ahead and get these date dots put down. I was watching a YouTube video on the wedding planner. I don't remember if it was a review or a setup. I watched a bunch of videos because, you know, that's what we do. I have been, that's basically all I've been watching on YouTube is wedding related or wedding planner related videos. But they were mentioning, the person I was watching, that the Erin Condren date dots are just, they're very big and they're kind of obnoxious. So she ended up buying date dots from another shop. A lot of sticker shops make date dots that aren't gonna be this big. And while I agree that they are a little bit big and they take up a lot of space, it just didn't seem worth the time or the extra effort, extra money to buy date dots from an Etsy shop because I knew they were gonna be more expensive, definitely than the free ones that came with the, the wedding planner to begin with, but then even more than the, the ones that I bought from Erin Condren because it's considered an accessory, so I got 15% off. If this was gonna be my like everyday planner and I wanted to maximize the space in each box, then I would totally do that. But for this, I'm probably not gonna have more than one thing in each box anyway. So I figured the big ones are probably fine. Because of that review though, I am going to not set up the entire month right now. I'm just going to do October and November because those are the upcoming months. That way, if I do end up hating the date cover sizes on this layout, I can switch it for the future. I don't have to you know, take them all off in the future months. So my plan, 
plan is each month when I set up my normal monthly layout and plan my month then, I will also pull out my wedding planner and plan that upcoming month as well. It is definitely going to be a balance next year between my you know everyday life commitments, my goals, and those things that I wanna still accomplish as well as planning the wedding. So each month I will just pull out all three planners, my wedding planner, my power sheets, and my normal planner, whatever that is next year, and you know, map it out. Okay, so that's all I'm gonna do for now. Oh, I guess I need an extra asterisk one there. Normally what I do in my monthly planner is I'll put like a sticker strip to mark out those dates. I'm not gonna bother with this with this planner. So let's go back to October. I am gonna add the engagement. I'm not gonna do that right this second because I need to go dig out the those stickers. And then what I'm planning to do on the notes page is just do a monthly to-do list. So all the things that I wanna get done each month. So October, the things we needed to do was finish the budget, which we did, um, email the venues, which I did initially. I need to do some email responses and then end up scheduling some appointments. What I'm trying to do right now with the venues is really get a feel for the ones that I want to go see in person. We're only gonna have about a day there to go look at venues in person, and my list right now is pretty long, so I wanna narrow it down. So I emailed them initially for some more information and for their availability, but now I'm gonna follow up with some more questions and really try to get a sense for which ones are like the front runners. And then I also went through some magazines that my mom and I bought and I clipped out or I, I ripped out the pages that I do want to keep and ideas that I wanna keep. And in a little bit, I'll show you what I'm gonna do with those. So same thing for November, I'm just gonna use a brain dump. And then I don't have anything scheduled for November. To-do list wise, it's just those emails back and forth with the venues that I was talking about. Truthfully, November is pretty busy with travel, so I probably won't get that much done. But I'm gonna try and put things, well, you know what? I wasn't gonna put the dates down in case I didn't like them, but like I have stuff, well, not yet, but we do have some stuff booked. I guess I can start writing things in the days without the dates, although that's gonna be a little confusing. Like the days that we're gonna tour venues are Monday and Tuesday, um, the first week of January. I don't know. I need to think about that a little bit more because I wasn't gonna put down all the date dots yet, but I do have some stuff scheduled both for January and for February that I want to get marked in the planner. So they have, like I said, they have 24 months and they've got the notes page and the monthly layout for each of those. I don't quite need 24 months because we are looking at spring of 21, but we aren't planning on going on our honeymoon until later. For Sam's job, his year end is June 30th. So he doesn't really wanna take a lot of time off for the wedding and then a lot of time off for the honeymoon until June 30th. So we're not gonna go on our honeymoon until later this anyway, so I'm kind of glad it goes through September. That way I can still keep using this to plan out and document our honeymoon. So then the next section is called the I do list, and this is what really makes it different from a monthly planner. So other than this section, it really is a deluxe monthly planner. The deluxe monthly planners are dated, but it's got monthly sections at the beginning and then a bunch of notes pages in the back. But this section right here is what makes the wedding planner the wedding planner. So it starts with some top wedding tips that I do think are very helpful. Then it has a page that has getting started. So you've got wedding colors, styles and themes, and then wedding must haves. And we took a style quiz on the knot where we went through a bunch of pictures. It, it was really cool actually, and you got to swipe. It was almost it was like Tinder. And you swipe right for like yes and left for no, I think it was. So anyways, it gave us our general wedding colors. I'm not ready to set this up quite yet, and here's why. I'm struggling between attire versus decor. So the the questions that we took on the knot and the answers that we got for wedding colors, to me it really feels more like the decor. It was like the venue and the table settings and all the flowers and that kind of stuff, and I agree with the results that we got. However, our attire is not going to be those colors. But I don't necessarily wanna take the attire colors and and put them into the decor colors, which I know sounds funny. Let me explain a little bit more. I have always wanted red bridesmaid dresses. I think that everybody looks good in red. I think every season looks good with red. I just think that it's a beautiful color. It, pick, it photographs well, and that's what I want. I don't necessarily want red in the decor, though. That's not what we're really going for. Do they have to be the same? I'm. Some people will probably say yes. I'm gonna say no. So I, I haven't quite decided what to do here because the wedding colors for the attire are probably gonna be red dresses and gray suits, but we're not gonna use red and gray in the decor. We're gonna use really more neutrals. It's gonna be like white and green and like brown, 
basically. Um, so I don't know yet. I, I haven't gotten there yet. And then styles and themes, I can also fill this in uh, from the knot as well. They had like a section that was what your general theme is based on the pictures that you chose. And then the most important wedding must-haves, we did talk about this a little bit when we talked about the budget. I want to ask him again just to nail it down like what his top three are. I know what mine are, so I'll probably just put both of ours here just so that I can reference them, even if they're the same. So I do like this page, I just am not quite ready to set it up yet. All right, so the next section is the like monthly breakdown section. And I have a love-hate relationship with this section. So it's got 14 to nine months, eight to six, six to four, four to two, one, and the week of. Truthfully, I kind of wish it was broken down a little bit more. Like I wish this one at least was broken down, like 12 and up and then like nine to 12 maybe, and then, I kind of wish maybe this one was broken up. I feel like there is way more to do like the month and the week of. I feel like it should be like the month before, two weeks before, and then the week of or something like that. But I'm gonna make it work. Here is my plan for these pages. The first thing I need to do is I'm gonna add to it. So I have seen multiple of these lists. I have one from a magazine. I have one from a book that I got. There are a bazillion on Pinterest. So what I'm gonna do is add things to each of these sections that I'm forgetting or that not that the Erin Condren planner forgot, but just like more detailed than what they have here. Like they have the big ticket items, but I don't, I think there's more, I, especially since we're gonna be doing a lot of it ourselves. I'm not saying that it's gonna be like a DIY crazy wedding, but we aren't just booking a venue that's all inclusive that comes with everything, like a caterer and a bar and all that stuff. We're booking a sort of blank space venue that we're going to have to build out ourselves. So I just think that there's gonna be more to this than they have listed here. The other thing that I wanna do is I wanna add dates. So I'm not gonna do this until we have a wedding date because it could be off by a month or two depending on the month that we end up going with. But for example, say we're getting married in April. So 14 to nine months before is like January to June of 2020. So I want to somewhere on this page mark that this is January to June. Then when I'm transferring things to the to-do lists in the monthly layouts right here, I can refer just to this page. Don't look over here, like look at just this page. I think that is gonna be for me the hardest part, not hardest part, but I think trying to stay focused on what's the most important thing right now. It is so hard to get sucked down a Pinterest rabbit hole of looking at dresses and looking at flowers and all, all that she has and not focusing on what is the most important thing to do right this second. So the last thing that I wanna make sure I do on these pages is find a way to mark the things that need to happen in Austin. So if you don't know, quick background story, we are both originally from Texas. I'm from San Antonio and he's from Houston. We both went to the University of Texas in Austin. We did not meet there. We both moved to New York City separately and met here in New York at a University of Texas alumni event. So Texas is home for both of us. It just makes sense for us to go home and get married in Texas. All of our family, not all of our family, but a lot of our family is there that, you know, they'll be within driving distance of the location. And then we also have a lot of friends that are from across the country, friends that we met in school. I actually lived in Chicago for a little bit during high school, and then friends that we've made here in New York. And so Austin is really, it's central to both of our families in Houston and San Antonio, and it is a great city and it's a great weekend trip for our friends that don't live in Texas. So Austin is what we have chosen as our location, yes, I understand that it is going to be a lot more difficult to plan a wedding somewhere that I don't live and that I am likely going to be going back a handful of times next year. Like, let's be real, all my flights, vacation days next year are probably gonna be to Texas. But I wanna make sure that on these pages, I mark, whether it's with a highlighter or a sticker or a circle it or whatever, which things need to happen in Austin. Like, meet with the caterers. We obviously can't do that from here. And then the way that I see it is we're likely gonna go to Austin each of these chunks. So we are, we do have a trip booked in January. That's gonna be this chunk. We're gonna probably have to go late next summer. That's gonna be this chunk, which is gonna be, you know, meeting with the caterers, meeting with the florists and all that stuff. And then this one, I'm not so sure that we're gonna have to go back like especially reading over these really quickly. We can maybe meet with the officiant here while we're there. I don't think, the cake, I might move over here as well and do that while we're in Austin. Everything else on this list looks like it can happen from New York. This one, we are definitely going to have to go back 
to get our marriage license because that has to be done three months before. I don't wanna try and do it the week of the wedding. It has to be done 72 hours in advance. So we have to make sure we go on like the Tuesday before Wednesday. I would rather go down to Austin three months before and do some final walkthroughs and do it then. And then truthfully, some of these things are probably gonna have to move to this side for the week of. I'll probably get there the week before um, so things like stocking the bar, like that I'm gonna have to move over here because I'm not. I'm just gonna do it the week of. Anyways, long story short is to say that I am planning to mark on here which things can be done from New York and which things need to get done in Austin. I appreciate that there are these extra notes sections though because that's where I'm planning to add extra stuff. All right, then we have the wedding party section, which I am excited to fill in. We have decided who was going to be part of our wedding party, but we have not asked them yet, so I'm not going to fill that in quite yet. I'm not really sure that we need quite all this information. I mean, I'm sh assuming that they will handle, you know, their dress size and their suit size and getting that done. I will probably consolidate their phone numbers and emails. It's definitely important for the, the groomsmen since I don't really have most of their phone numbers. That's actually not true. I have the majority of the group's phone numbers, but that is not the point. Anyways, I am planning to fill this in. They do give you 10 spaces for each side. We are not planning to have 10 on each side, but I'm also planning to include information for the flower girls and the ring bearer. The other reason I'm not filling this in is because we don't 100% know if they'll say yes. There's obviously the chance that they, for whatever reason, cannot commit. So I will fill this in as soon as we ask and confirm our wedding party. Okay, the next page is writing your vows, which when I first got this, I was like, oh, I don't really need these pages. I have always just assumed that I would do very traditional vows, partly because I cry so easily and the thought of trying to make it through personal vows without crying is just impossible. And then I was talking to Sam and he was like, oh, we are definitely doing our own vows. I don't want it to be cookie cutter. Also two pages seemed like a lot to me, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to use this side as jotting down ideas over the course of the next 18 months. Whenever something pops into my head that I'm like, oh, I wanna make sure that I mention that in our vows or oh, that's something that's really special to us. I'm gonna put it here. And then maybe the week before the wedding, I'm gonna use this page to actually like organize all my thoughts from this page, change the order around, actually turn it into words. So I'm excited that there's two pages. <laughs> All right, the next pages are the guest list. I am not writing down everybody that's getting an invitation on these pages. That is just ridiculous. I have a spreadsheet for that. All of their addresses, like that is all in a spreadsheet. It just seems like a waste to write it all down here. What I'm thinking I'm gonna use these pages for is when people RSVP. I have color coding written down here, either color coding them between are they driving or flying? Are they out of town? Are they bride or groom? Are they family or friends? Like something like that. Maybe putting them into different categories, like family in town, family out of town, friends in town, friends out of town, something like that, just so that we can get a better sense for those kinds of things, like how many hotel room blocks we're gonna need and blah, blah, blah. So I don't think I'm gonna write names down on this list until they RSVP, just because it seems like a better use of the space for me. All right, the next pages are the budget checklist. My really nice handwriting that I have all over these sticky notes. Clearly I wasn't trying to make them perfect. Just like normal budgeting, I don't budget in writing. I budget in a spreadsheet. I use Excel for my personal budget 100%. I feel like I'm gonna be the same way with my wedding. I can't imagine adding up all these numbers and doing all of this in writing. The other thing is there's definitely things missing from these lists. Like there are definitely details that are not included here. So I'm not 100% sure how or if I'm gonna use these pages. Honestly, I just don't know what I'm gonna use these pages for because I just really like budgeting in a spreadsheet. Okay, the next page is about pictures and I really appreciate this page. I mean, you can Google this, right? But thinking about Googling it and making sure that you're working on it. So it, it has a list of all the shots that you want and a space to add your own, which I very much appreciate. If you don't know, we have a huge, huge family. We both come from divorced parents. So we have eight parents and 13 siblings and just, I mean, we have family for days. So I really wanna make sure that I list out all the different combinations of things that we want. I want me with my siblings. I want him with his, his siblings. I want both of us with all of our siblings. I want, you know, my mom's whole family. I want 
my dad's whole family, I want both of my families, just all the combinations that I think are important to document that day. So I am glad that I have space to list that out there. That way when we meet with our photographer, it makes it so much easier. Okay. I, I put this sticky note here because I didn't want to forget to remember it. I love the quotes at the bottom. I mean, Erin Condren is known for their quotes, but like the quotes, I don't know, they're just so special and I just love them. Okay, the next page is about the music list. I love this page. I like that it has your first dance. It has wedding party intros. I don't know that we're going to do this one. We were just at a wedding and I just feel like this part is always kind of awkward. Let me know. If you've ever, I've actually never been a real bridesmaid. That may sound kind of crazy, but I, I've been a junior bridesmaid. I've been a flower girl a million times, but I've never been a true bridesmaid. But every wedding I've ever been to, this part seems awkward. Like the part where the wedding party is like jaunting in, I don't know, it just seems strange. So I don't know that we're gonna do this. I like that it says special dance instead of like father, daughter, mother, son, because somebody might not, their father might not be around or their mother might not be around. So these might be other special dances that they're gonna do instead. Love that idea. I also love that it has space to start jotting down songs. I already have some ideas. The wedding we just went to, Footloose, was the best song that they played all night. Every generation loved it. Everybody got up and danced. It was it was perfect. So definitely want that on the list. I also want to make sure that we play the Texas fight song. That's just, I mean, we both went to Texas. Like, we're playing the fight song. And then the other idea that I have is to include it on the RSVP for wedding song requests. I don't know if you've ever had that happen before. I did have it for one wedding where they asked, you know, what song do you wanna to dance to on the RSVP? And that helped make a list. So I think I'm gonna do that as well. I also like that there's a section of please do not play. Are there any songs, whether they bring back bad memories or is it a genre? Like, please don't play any of this. I like that you start to think about that before you talk with your DJ. Okay, the next page is about flowers and it's got flowers in season and then it's got, you know, all the different flowers that you would create. The thing that I feel like is missing a little bit from this page are family related flowers. So like I intend to get corsages for the mothers and the grandmothers and then boutonnieres for all of our brothers that aren't in the wedding party. So I kind of, I wish there was a space to mark that as well because they're technically not part of the bridal party, but I can make that work. Like I can draw a line here and make it work, but that's just the one thing from this page that I did feel like was missing a little bit. I do like that they have the flowers that are in season. I think that's helpful. All these pages, they may not be 100% all the information that you're gonna need, but they're gonna get you thinking. They're gonna get you to start thinking about the things that you need to think about. All right, the next page is about the cakes, which I think is, again, very helpful. I saw that she put like all the different flavors that they were gonna have, and then underneath she put both of their comments. So she put like their initials, and then she wrote what their comments were for each of the flavors. I thought that was really smart. Okay, the next page is about drinking. So cheers, it's got all the different options that you're gonna have for the different categories. I think that this is very helpful, especially for us, we are gonna be getting our own alcohol, so, I think that this page is very helpful. I also like the little comment boxes that they have here about things that you can leave out. And this one made me laugh because the wedding we just went to, this is so true. They handed everybody a glass of champagne as they walked into the reception. And then I saw on our table, only one person had finished their champagne. So then we have the menu and they have a section for the rehearsal dinner and the section for the reception dinner, which I think is a little bit interesting that they're the same size because I feel like this one is a lot bigger, but it's fine. And then down here it has notes from tastings. I don't know that you really do a tasting for the rehearsal dinner. I mean, if we can, that would be really cool. But at least we can mark down everything that we need to mark down here and then the, the reception dinner. I also put a sticky note here to mark drinks because I think drinks are gonna come with our rehearsal dinner space and I just wanna make sure that I don't forget that when I'm working on that menu. All right, the next page, look at my sticky note. The next pages are the vendor contact list. I think these pages are fantastic. I think that these are so helpful to include all the information about all of your vendors so that you, you know, it's just all in one place, not spread out in a bunch of different emails and a bunch of different contracts. So I really, really like these pages. All right, the next pages are the seating arrangement, which this I am also not 100% sure that I wanna do in writing. I guess maybe when I'm done, like once I've finalized it, I'll put it down in writing. But I think that it might be helpful to do it in a spreadsheet the first time or do it on sticky notes. I, again, also could see me color coding this between family and friends, between his side and my side so that I can move people around. The other thing that I'm concerned about with this page is different sized tables. So some of the venues had some like rectangular tables as part of their table setup. So 
those would be kind of hard to maneuver in here. These are all set for 10, 10 person or less tables, but I think some of my venues have tables that seat more. So just something to consider. I think that this page is helpful maybe once it's all nailed down. It has space for, I guess four, uh, is that right? One, two, three, four, five. It has space only, oh, there's a second page. <laughs> I was gonna say there's only space for 200 and that might be a problem. Um, but no, just kidding. It has space for up to 400 seating assignments. So we'll see, we'll see if I end up using those pages. All right, the next pages are the gift log. I love these pages too. You know, writing down the name and what the gift was and have you sent the thank you card yet? I think that this is so helpful. I think the other thing about these pages that I like is that you can start doing it right away. Like somebody already sent us an engagement gift. Okay, well, I can go ahead and write down the name and the gift and go ahead and send the thank you card. And then I, you know, I know it's done. I don't have to wait until the end. So if gifts start coming in early, I can go ahead and start tracking that. Okay, the next pages are gifts to give. So bridesmaids, groomsmen, family, and guests. So I like that. This page, I will probably, you know, start jotting down some ideas. I've talked about this a little bit in some weekly vlogs, but I'm trying to embrace not having everything be perfect right at the very beginning. And if I jot down an idea, it can be okay if it's in pen and then I end up not using it or I end up crossing it off or adding things. So just something that I'm gonna try to do. I have some ideas already what I wanna do for my bridesmaids. So I'm gonna just go ahead and jot those ideas down. And if it ends up being something different, like it's okay. All right, the next page, I don't know, I'm a little bit torn by. So it has the wedding day timeline and it starts at six and it ends at seven and it does have time for the half hours. Now, I think that the purpose of this timeline is for all the stuff before the wedding, not actually during the wedding. Cause looking at the notes, it says like makeup, hair appointments, photography, florist, etc. My big question though is why does it stop at seven? Because I plan to have a timeline into the wedding as well. What time are we doing the toasts? What time are we doing the parrot dances? What time are we cutting the cake, etc. And so I kind of wish that this went a little bit later. Also, I don't want to start at 6am. I understand that if you have an early in the day wedding, like the bride starts getting ready at 6am. I'm not gonna be that bride. So I kind of wish it was shifted up a little bit, maybe eight to nine would have been better for my schedule. I could change it truthfully if I really wanted to. I could, you know, make this 8 a.m. and make this 9 p.m. Or I could just extend it over here into the notes section. I don't know yet. I am planning to hire a day of coordinator and I anticipate that they will help me a lot with the timeline of the day of. So I'm not, I'm not as, stress, the irony about this page. All right, then we have the honeymoon information, which I think is helpful. We have how do you write a thank you note, which is helpful. I mean, you could Google it, but it's, it is helpful. And then another quote. So then we move into this interesting section that I do kind of wish had its own tab, or at least there was a, a tab to start this section or a tab to start the notes page, but that's okay. So the next couple pages they have for memories and they've got like boxes, for pictures and then a place where you can write words. If you can read by sticky notes, I'm not planning to use this for memories. I do want to document all kinds of things, but I don't want to do it in the wedding planner. This is like, this is the planner. This is how I'm planning the wedding. So what I want to do with these pages is put down pictures. Like I want to use the boxes to put down pictures and ideas. And I already have a ton of ideas. Some of these are from magazines. Some of them I printed out didn't I print out some myself? Oh yeah, here. I printed out some myself. So what I wanna do is cut out all the things from either things that I printed myself or from the magazines and I want to put them on these pages and add notes to them. On this page, I'm gonna do the ceremony space. So Sam is Jewish, so we're going to have a huppa, and I have some pictures of what I you know, kind of want it to look like, maybe some decor for the ceremony space, a welcome sign, etc. Some of it, you know, I'm just gonna write down ideas and some of it I will actually have pictures. Then I wanna use a page for flowers. Truthfully, I'm not gonna do all that many flowers. I think flowers are kind of not a waste of money because they are beautiful, but I just think that they are way overpriced for the fact that they die in a couple of days. I do plan to have flowers in the bouquets, and the bridesmaids, and myself, corsages, boutonnieres, and on the huppa. I don't plan to do flowers on the tables, but this is a page for flower ideas for the bouquets and all those other things. 
Then the centerpiece idea, since I'm not doing flowers, I have a lot of other ideas for the centerpiece, how to build that up and make that beautiful without flowers. So that's what I'm gonna use this page for. Then I'm gonna do table ideas. So this is like the setup of the table. Since we are doing a buffet style, I'm not going to have plates on the tables. I'm not going to have utensils on the tables. So I've been looking up some ideas on how to make the tables look beautiful without actually having place settings already there. The next page I'm gonna use is the hotel gift bag. Since the majority of our guests are gonna be out of town, we are gonna do gift bags at the hotel and I have seen some cute ideas that I wanna make sure that I document. We also got a cute one this weekend at the wedding we were at. so. I wanna take a picture of that as well. All right, then these two pages are gonna be all about me and my appearance. So I'm gonna do one page for dress ideas and then one page for hair and makeup. I do have a bunch of dress pictures saved in a, an album on my phone, but I wanna sort of go through and make, make myself pick my favorites and put them down on the page and write down what's important about the dresses that I have picked out so far. And then same thing with hair and makeup. I've been sort of looking at pictures and trying to figure things out, but I wanna sort of force myself to pick my favorites and get them documented. And then these two pages are just gonna be miscellaneous ideas. Like this is a really good example. I love these, like we're gonna likely do barbecue and I love these little barbecue wipes. I love the, although this I guess goes with the welcome bag. The idea of a do, like a custom do not disturb sign, you know, et cetera. This is going to be for all those miscellaneous ideas that I come across that I want to make sure that I document. Then we just have a bazillion notes pages, which I think are very helpful. I think that these will be good when we go meet with different vendors. I think if I run out of space in one of these sections, I can add more pictures into this. That is all in terms of the setup. I didn't actually set up all that much, but I, I talked through all the things that I'm planning to set up. There's also a couple sticker pages in the back. We have this one that's got some different icons, important celebrate to do reminder. I don't know how much I'm gonna use these some more like functional type stickers. I don't know how much I'm gonna use these. And then there are event stickers that have specific things on it. So caterer, photographer, you know, et cetera. I might use some of these, we'll see. And then some more just event stickers. And then there is a pocket in the back. So that is it in terms of the wedding planner. I am so excited to actually get started. I mean, I have started, uh, I have a like multi-tab spreadsheet, but there is still so much to do. And so far I'm having a ton of fun and I'm trying to just enjoy the process, enjoy being engaged, enjoy planning the wedding and enjoy sharing it with you. I hope to share as much as I, as much as I can and bring you along. I think it'll just be so much fun. But the other thing I wanna share with you is a wedding planner itself. So as I mentioned, the Erin Condren team sent me a 12 month version that I don't plan on using. And so I want to gift it to one of you. So if you are engaged and you would like the Erin Condren 12 month wedding planner, it starts in October. So it's from October of 2019. Well, I guess it really could be October of 2020 to October of 21 if you wanted to use it that way. But let me know in the comments if you are engaged, what your wedding date is. Or if you're like me and you don't have a wedding date, what season are you looking at? I will pick somebody randomly when I get back from vacation. I normally like to leave giveaways up for a week after the video goes live. But one week after this video goes live, I'm gonna be out of the country, so I'm not committing to choosing a winner then. I won't be able to mail it till I get back anyways. So I will pick a winner randomly when I get back from vacation and send the wedding planner on its way to one of you. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, please click that subscribe button. I upload new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Thank you so much for watching. Happy planning. I wish that it was broken down a little bit more granularly. Granular, granular, granularly. Truthfully, I wish it was broken down a little bit more granular. I can't say that word. Let me take that sticky note off. That is private. Marking down, I have color code writing down, written down. I don't know what what I would use these plate, what, blah, 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 um, what's it called? Okay, I don't even know what that says, so we're gonna take that off. Lost my train of thought. All right, the next pages is the seat, the next pages is grammar. So what I'm planning to do, <laughs> I just said plan like 14 times.